IHCN Studios. It's Braves Beat. Happy Friday, Braves, and welcome to this week's episode of Braves Beat. I'm Nayla Alderbegi. And I'm Micah Solashatz. Man, Micah, this week has taken it out of me. Bio notes, stats tests, tennis, I'm so glad it's over. What about you? Yeah, my week was fine. I'm glad it's over too, but definitely not as bad as yours sounds. Anyways, we have a lot of exciting news to cover, so let's get started. The middle of September marks homecoming week, my personal favorite, and we have lots of exciting events planned. Panel painting for registered clubs after school is on Wednesday, 918. The parade is on Friday, and the dance will be on Saturday, the 21st, from 8 to 10.30 p.m. in the gym. Tickets are on sale now. To kick the week off in style, here are Paige and Ava with the Spirit Week themes. T-shirts will be sold next week for $15 before school in room 103 and at lunch. This year, we're introducing a new homecoming event. On September 18th, join us for a tailgate at the girls' soccer game at Stephen Field. Cheer on the soccer team and enjoy hot dogs, snow cones, cotton candy, and Kona ice. Last Thursday, the new IH Entrepreneur Center cut the ribbon at the grand opening. Check out this clip. The Entrepreneur Center of Indian Hill is officially open. Let's go make trips to reality. Tonight is the grand opening of the Indian Hill Entrepreneurs Center. This space is to serve as a hub of innovation in areas of experiential learning for kids, entrepreneurship, career pathway development, and leadership development. And with this launch, the 2024 IH Experience Ships Fall Cohort is now open. If you are interested, now is your time to sign up. You have the next three weeks to apply. Click on the link in the description. Make your dream a reality. Don't wait, sign up today. Sophomore class, listen carefully. Student officers are selling sweatshirts as a fundraiser. Sophomore Xavier is here to give you more information on how to purchase one. Hello Braves, uh, I am Xavier Sharif, the class of 2027 class president, uh, and I'm here to talk to you today about uh, the recent sweatshirt design competition. So as many of you know, we have held our 2027 sweatshirt class design competition, and what students would do is they would submit it, they would submit their design, and then the students would vote. Well, the votes are in, and this is the design that we've chosen. It is, uh, this is the back and this is the front. It was designed by Sophie Quo. Uh, it's $40 if you want to order it online. Uh, you can order it September 16th through 18th. And uh, if you want to get it in person, then bring a check or cash to uh, Flex on September 18th. So please make sure that you order one. I think that it's a really nice design. Thank you. Thanks for that information. Make sure you grab one before they're gone. As November approaches and we enter an election year, remember that your vote matters. Here's Jacob Ruby with an important PSA. Hi, I'm Jacob Ruby. If you're gonna be 18 on or before November 5th, you can register to vote at our voter registration drive next Tuesday, September 17th during all three lunches. All you need to bring is a driver's license. Thank you and I hope to see you there. Thanks, Jacob. Scan the QR code for more information on your voter registration. Well, our fall sports teams are in full swing. Let's toss it over to our sports reporters, Chase and Birch, for this week's report. Hello, Braves. I'm Chase Rolfe. And I'm Birch Carter, here for this week's sports report. We've changed things up a bit on the sports report this week. Let's see all the scores from this week.
We have had an amazing week of sports so far, but to make it even better, boys soccer and field hockey remained undefeated this week, so let's take a deeper dive into those teams. Field hockey beat two teams this week, Kettering Fairmont last Thursday 7-1 and Summit this Tuesday 5-0. In the Kettering Fairmont game, there was one goal by Mira Chandler. Now back to Chandler. Chandler looking for the hit and that was no. The second one is up and that is a goal. One goal by Ella Wiggers. For Wiggers and that's a goal. Two goals for Vivian Whaley. And that's a Braves goal. Oh, big kick oh, save and man, then. And that's score. Kick. And three goals by Maddie Lamphere. For an open net. Dodges one, looking for a shot, and it's a goal. Don't get another opportunity. Passes it right out, and that's a goal. Whaley gets it right to Lanfear. Lanfear breaks away, and that's another goal. Well, in the Summit game, there was one goal by Charlotte Condorotis. There's a toss-up, and it's a goal for the Braves. One goal by Samantha Kane. Baker tries to hit it right in the middle. And that's a goal. And another hat trick by Matty Lanfear. Here for the Braves as they're entering in. They don't have numbers, but they do have opportunity. Will intercept Lanfear in the middle. Oh, and that is another Braves goal. Lanfear in the middle. And Lanfear gets her third goal. Amazing week for Matty and the field hockey team. They played Thursday against Walnut Hills, and their next game is Saturday against Dublin Kaufman, and we'll have those results for you next week. Boys soccer tied Penn Charter School 2-2 two two on Saturday and beat Madeira Tuesday 4-2. to In the Penn Charter game, there was a goal by Ian Kincaid and a goal by Aiden Faber. Then on Tuesday, there were four goals total. One was scored by Aiden Faber and three goals by Connor Welks. Alex Swalla also had some great saves in both games. Amazing week for boys soccer. Go Braves. Their next game is Saturday versus Bay, and we will have the score for that game next week. Good luck, Braves. That's all the sports news we have for this week. Now back to the news desk. Thanks for catching us all up on our fall sports teams. Go Braves. As always, our most anticipated segment is here. Here's Mr. Johnson with his two words. What's up, Braves? Here are your two words for the week. Iron sharpens. Just like iron sharpens iron, we have the ability to sharpen one another. As students and leaders in our school and our community, it's essential that we work together in a spirit of excellence and service to one another. Remember, we see growth as leaders in many ways, but it's undeniable that our growth as a leader can be magnified when we are committed to supporting others. Simple things like saying good morning to someone, showing up for your friends at activities or sporting events, or just asking someone how they're doing can make a huge difference. By helping peers grow, we not only lift them up, but we also develop ourselves in the process. True leadership is rooted in responsibility to help others reach their potential. When we invest in the success of others, we create a ripple effect that makes us all stronger, individually and as a community. Let's commit to sharpening each other because that's what real leadership looks like. That's your two words for the week. Go Braves. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for your two words. All right, Braves, that's all the news we have for this week. Be sure to follow us on X, subscribe to us on YouTube, and email us with any school updates. And remember, stay, stay classy, classy, Indian, Indian Hill. Hill. I'm here with Doc Watt. Doc Watt, if you could be any fictional character, who would you be? The Great Gatsby. The Great Gatsby isn't a character. You mean Jay Gatsby, right? Correct. You just said the great Gatsby. You met Mr. Gatsby, right? That's correct. If Mr. Gatsby built a house, you know, right next to... Is, uh, Daisy. 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 God, you know that right off the bat. Daisy, he built a house right next to Daisy. Wouldn't that make him a stalker? He built a house across the bay from Daisy because he loves her. He's not a stalker. There's a difference. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be... stalker is cringe. Which is also bring up the fact that he's rich and she thinks he's attractive. If he wasn't rich and attractive, would he be considered a stalker? Yes. Does stalking, it, stalking is totally a function of your socioeconomic status and your attractiveness level. This says a lot about society in general, kids. Well, what's, a, what's a classic? Like an old... You would know, you're an English teacher! I'm here with Mr. Pergalski. Mr. Pergalski, if you could be any fictional character, what would you be? Paul Atreides from Dune, obviously. 
I'm here with Logan. Logan, if you could be any fictional character, who would you be and why? Uh, Nemo. Uh, because, like his messed up fin, I currently can't walk correctly. Uh, thank you, yeah. I'm here with Dan. Dan, if you could be any fictional character, who would you be? I'd probably be the Rick friend. Uh, well, why? It's just a cold world we live in. I'm here with Nate. Nate, if you could be any fictional character, who would you be? I'd be Toe Mater. Could you explain why? He's just a happy kind of guy. You know, I, I respect that. I'm here with... Elsa Nydic. Elsa, if you could be any fictional character, who would you be and why? I would be Spider-Man because he has so many different abilities and he's just OP. Uh, does Spider you know Spider-Man includes uh, living in New York and being broke? Are you okay with that? Yeah, because he saves lives, so. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I'm here with... Livy, Caroline. If you guys could be any fictional character, who would you be and why? I would be Monica from Friends because she's my idol and I love her and I want to live a life like her when I'm older. I would be Rachel from Friends because she has really good style and she's really pretty. And they're best friends in the show. So, yeah. I'm here with... Jaya Eshelman. Jaya, if you could be any fictional character, who would you be? Um, I think I'd be like Princess Leia. Does that include uh, being constant on the run and getting captured by the Empire in A New Hope? I mean, yeah, sounds pretty fun. Exciting, you know? Gotta spice things up. <laughs> does, does, that, does that also include uh, being separated from Han Solo and your son Ben uh, turning to the dark side? Sure. Um, I mean, it's not like... It's not... I, that's, those aren't like the highlights, but yeah. I'm here with... Emma. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> If you could be any fictional character, who would you be and why? I would be Garfield the cat, because he just gets to sleep all day. Does that include getting diabetes from eating too much lasagna? <laughs> no. <laughs> I would I would exercise. I do like lasagna. Though. That, that, that's totally out of character for Garfield. Do you think people would notice that for doing exercise? No, because he's very sneaky, so I would do it sneakily. <laughs> The, the, the whole point is that he's not sneaky. So you're basically, you're, you're saying you'd be Garfield, but you'd be completely violating his character. Would you be, even be Garfield at that point? I'm here with? Caroline Langworthy. Oh my god, that's my twin. Anyways, uh, if you could be any fictional character, Caroline, who would you be and why? Probably Zack and Cody from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Wait, so would you be Zack and I'd be Cody? Yeah. Great answer. Thank you. Here with? Jeremiah. Oh, there's all those feet. I'm here with Jeremiah. Jeremiah, if you could be any fictional character, who would you be and why? The Flash. <laughs> why would you be Flash? So I could be faster.